let's start with that Qantas story. Uh, debt repayment upping its capacity. On the face of it, it would seem like a good news story, though what did catch my eye was a cutback in CapEx. Julia, on that score, how's the market going to handle it? A buyback is usually good news for shares, but the key for Qantas is the turnaround in its international business. It is coming under quite a bit of pressure from, from Virgin, and we are seeing a lot of airlines increasing cap capacity, including Qantas, looking to increase capacity. So it is a more competitive environment. We have seen Qantas cutting costs aggressively and trying to decrease capital expenditure, but it does need to renew its fleet as well. But usually a share buyback, good news for the shares. The shares have fallen quite a bit in the last 52 weeks, so it does make sense. But usually it's a sign of confidence that the uh, company has in uh, value in terms of the share price. So this should be good news for Qantas, but it's going to be a difficult day today. Responding well, uh, they are adding 2.4%. Listen, a story we were tracking yesterday just mm. coming in at the close was Linus uh, with our Rare Earths uh, plant in Malaysia. Uh, the environmentalists have been fighting tooth and nail to see that one mothballed. Not uh, so, says the court. The shares are back in play, Julia, down almost 4%. Is that swimming against the tide from where you thought they had come online at? Well, it's going to be a difficult day for all the resource companies with uh, the geopolitical risks that we are seeing at the moment, with perhaps the exception of the energy sector, which may outperform. We did see oil prices up by 1.1%, but altogether that Israeli uh, defence force coming out to say that they've killed the Hamas leader, adding to geopolitical risk, and I guess that's going to be bad news in terms of commodity prices. We did see most commodities falling. In fact, BHP was down by 2.2% in the US. We also saw Westpac falling around about 2.2%. So it does look like leading the losses will be that materials as well as the uh, banking space. But we know that on days like this, it is companies like Linus that have that added risk uh, that do see heavier falls. We have a look at Linus. It's been all about that Malaysian processing plant. We've seen the shares coming back online, but I guess investors are a little bit cautious given the court cases that we've seen and the delays that we've seen in that Malaysian uh, processing Plant. So this stock has a little bit more risk than some of the blue chips out there on the market. And I think that's why we're going to see a bigger fall today. Mm. All right, Julia, just while we've got you, James Hardy, out with uh, those uh, half-year numbers, your thoughts are still asbestos coming into this play with this stock. It's going to be a likely story for its lifetime, we think. James Hardy has actually had a very good year. In fact, if we have a look at the last 52 weeks, it's really seen quite substantial outperformance. This is a stock that's up by 45%. And if you compare it to some of the other building product companies out there, we've seen Adelaide Brighton up by 1%, and actually CSR has been down by 28% in the same period. If we have a look at James Hardy, it continues to grow in the U.S., and that's the key here. Around about 90% of its earnings comes from the U.S., and we're seeing tentative signs that the U.S. housing market is starting to stabilize and improve, and that's really been behind that outperformance in terms of its share price. But I think with Barack Obama coming out overnight in his speech to talk about $1.6 trillion worth of new tax revenue, it's going to be hard for those companies which do make a substantial amount of revenue in the U.S. So I think we'll see James Hardy coming under pressure. Now, they have come out with their first half result down by 2%, uh, $78.6 million. They're saying that they expect their full year uh, profit to come in at $140 to $150 million. Now, that's on the lower end of expectations out there in the market. We have a look at analyst expectations. It's in the range of about $147 million on the low side to about $178 million. So I think we will see some falls in James Hardy, but it's been a fantastic year so far, up by 45%. But the, the local share market certainly softening, hitting a seven-week low. Julia, just as, of course, we gear up into that fairly quiet or mundane trading uh, part of the year over the Christmas New Year period, all in all, uh, the Australian market not getting a lot of support. Is it still the macro picture, do you think, that investors are uh, attuned to in terms of their sell-downs here? Absolutely. We've seen some pretty weak leads coming through from the U.S. and the Australian market looks like it's going to follow suit. We did see the U.S. market down by 1.2%, so we are now seeing the U.S. stock market at a three-month low. In fact, since the election, we've seen five down days out of the last six sessions. So altogether, it has been a bit of a pullback. In fact, if we have a look overnight, 
all 10 sectors were trading lower. So we're expecting to see, see the same type of action on the Australian share market. On days like this, it is the defensive sectors which outperform, but I think we will still see them weaker, although less than the rest of the market. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of concerns in the market at the moment. As you mentioned, more of the fiscal cliff in the US and weaker data cutting, coming, coming out of Europe and also the geopolitical risk as well. We did see oil prices though bucking the trend up by 1.1% and it's all about safe haven play, plays with gold prices rising overnight as well. So I think investors on the Australian market today will be looking at those defensive high yielding areas but we are expecting to see every sector trading lower today.